You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. The digging continues at Beth Page Community Park. Here's what the site looked like today. Now, the town of Oyster Bay and the DEC say liquid and soil samples are being tested from the newly found chemical drums. Keep in mind, a total of 16 drums have been found buried at this park, which used to be a dumping grounds for Grumman Aerospace. And court has adjourned for the day in Donald Trump's hush money trial. The former president says the hearing, quote, went very well. If you're looking back, it goes back many, many years, 2015, maybe before that. And it's a case as to bookkeeping, which is a very minor thing in terms of the law, in terms of all the violent crime that's going on outside as we, as we speak. Now, prosecutors say the former president tried to, quote, corrupt the 2016 election. Defense attorneys say Trump is innocent and that the DA's office should never have brought this case. Now, Trump is accused of falsifying business records for his alleged role in hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. If convicted, he faces up to four years in prison on each of those 34 counts against him. Now, to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. In a local college, our students and staff rallying to get food services back on campus. Steve Langford reports in Garden City. Pizza on the plaza for all at Nassau Community College. But this is no party going on. What do you mean no food? What do you mean? Students and some faculty expressing disbelief and anger over the sudden shuttering of on-campus food and dining services here on April 16th. Bring back the food for our kids at Nassau. Yes! NCC's food services vendor left in mid-April with close to a month still left in the semester. Some are directing their displeasure at the college administration. They did nothing. They did nothing. Nothing. They did nothing. 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 The campus Starbucks is closed, as is the cafeteria. Vending machines have become one alternative. So for a lot of students here, if you want something to eat, you get in the car. Student Kevin Persaud drove to Chipotle to get lunch. It's inconvenient, he says. Now I have to spend time to go get food, come back, then I have to study, then I have to go to class. Without a car, there are mobile food apps. And I had to DoorDash a bagel for $20 because I have nowhere to eat on campus. We're on top of it. We, we won't let anybody starve in this campus. Nassau Community College says it's working to get catering services and restaurants here to fill in as soon as possible, along with food trucks. I don't want to make a commitment to it, but hopefully before the end of the week, uh, we will get assigned agreement and we'll be on it quickly. And NCC says it expects to have a new food vendor on campus in August. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. Long Islanders are coming up with unique ways to clean up this Earth Day. We're using magnets to pick up all the fishing hooks and all the other refuse that has been left behind in the water so we can leave the place um, a healthier environment for the fish and the visitors to the park alike. Now the crew calls this method you're watching here trash fishing. They found beer cans, plastic, and more trash at Twin Lakes Preserves in Wontaw. And the town of Hempstead is helping residents get ready for Passover celebrations safely. This is the traditional burning of the chometz. Uh, any items, bread items that are not kosher for Passover that rise, uh, we cannot have in the home. Woodmere firefighters help families burn any non-kosher items for Passover in a controlled environment. Hundreds of residents attended. Passover begins today and ends next Tuesday night. And clothing retailer Express is closing nearly 100 stores, including some here on Long Island. The company filed for bankruptcy and will be closing in Bayshore, Oceanside, and Valley Stream. Its sister store up west in Roosevelt Field will also shut down. There will still be six express stores and factory outlets on the island. And imagine dragons are coming to Donge Beach this summer. I was lightning before the thunder. Thunder, 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 thunder. I got some moves. Now the Loom Tour is stopping in Wonton on August 2nd. Tickets go on sale this Friday.
and the Jets are trading Zach Wilson to the Denver Broncos. A source tells Newsday the Jets will pay part of the quarterback's $5.5 million salary as well. The New York team signed veteran QB Tyrod Taylor this season. It's been a year since the state announced its Native American mascots ban, and most local districts have made changes, but some are still fighting the mandate. Macy Eglin has a story you'll see only in Newsday. One year after the state announced a ban on Native American mascots and imagery in schools, several Long Island districts say they're making progress in eliminating their mascots. I think we've done a really good job of taking a, a task and turning it into something really positive for the school. Sawanica High School in Floral Park taking a proactive approach, already removing their team name, the Indians, from many of their jerseys. Students and faculty came up with ideas, got a response from the community, and will soon announce their new mascot. I have found the students to be so open to the dialogue. Sawanica is one of 13 local districts affected by the state's ban, which was announced last April. The affected schools will have to remove any Native American imagery. For Sawanica, that means replacing the turf, removing benches, and updating their signs, something they say they have budgeted for already. The state says it is providing financial aid if needed. Many of the projects estimated to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Five districts are still fighting it in court. Massapequa, the first to file suit over their chief's logo, along with Kinetquat, the Thunderbirds, as well as Amityville, Wyandanche, and Wanta, which all go by the Warriors. There are many kinds of warriors. We have wounded warriors. I, I, I just don't think that it, they really should have to change their name. The same with the chiefs. We have fire chiefs, we have police chiefs. It's hand in glove. Massapequa are the Massapequa chiefs all over the town, not just schools. Local indigenous leaders say it's something they've been trying to eliminate for decades, calling the imagery offensive and harmful. The cost of, of litigation comes out of your budget as well. So, you know, what is the decision that you want? And the, what is the impact that you want to have in your community? Districts have until the end of the 2024-2025 school year to meet the mandate or risk losing state aid. Reporting for Newsday TV, I'm Macy Eglund. Now to read more about the mascot ban, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More for the Newsday TV video box. An East End Tulip Festival is expanding. Rachel White shows us how. <music> Flowers as far as the eye can see. This year, the annual Tulip Festival has planted roots in a second location. There are half a million tulips planted here at Water Drinker North Fork in Riverhead, and the best is still yet to come in the season. We started uh, Water Drinker in Manorville in 2018. Uh, we started Water Drinker North Fork, which is our newest farm here in Riverhead in 2023 for our fall season. So this is our first spring season. This farm is just a little bit different than Manorville. It's more rolling hills. In Manorville, it's a, it's a bit more flat. So it's really a different kind of scenery when you're visiting the Riverhead location. With a play area for the kids and a beer garden for the adults, many families have become regulars here. We've had an incredible turnout, a lot of community support. This is the perfect time to visit. We're almost at full bloom, uh, so we're really excited. And you can even take some of the farm home with you at a dollar a stem. We're family owned, uh, sixth generation. We have a big family, uh, a lot of kids. So seeing them, if they're having a good time, we're pretty sure that other families on Long Island are having a good time. The tulips will be in bloom through the last weekend of April. In Riverhead, Rachel Weiss for Newsday TV. Just love spring. Now to read more about the Tulip Festival, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box.
Now let's take a look at your sunny and mild Long Island weather. It was a gorgeous day outside today. Perfect day to talk about tulips. Maybe go see them tonight. We're in the high 30s and tomorrow we're near 60s. Taking a closer look at tomorrow. You can see it's sun, 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 sun all day. Temps nearing 60s and the seven day forecast looks pretty good with Wednesday eh, acting up a little bit. Long Island weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.